morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. That's found in Luke chapter two, verses 13 and 14. And now one of my favorite hymns, please join us. And it came upon a midnight clear. And if you are with a United Methodist uh, hymnal, you'll find it on page 218. Thank you for giving us the time to celebrate the blessings of diligent work and the harvest around us. We also pause to remember the blessings you have given us, especially through the saints who inspired our lives. Thank you in Jesus' name, amen. And now for the moment for the young and the young at heart. We are blessed in our moment for the young and the young at heart to be celebrating the season of Advent which are the four Sundays before Christmas, a part of our worship tradition and uh, blessing has been the lighting of the Advent wreath. Four different candles surrounding the Christ candle, uh, which will be lit, lit in succession week by week. For this first Sunday of Advent, we are blessed to have the chimes choir be the lighter of the Advent wreath for this first, first Sunday of Advent. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are glad whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in. We are glad to be here in this community with this family. It's a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome, it's a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. 
Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's ways and that we may walk in God's paths. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Come, Lord Jesus. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Most loving and wonderful God, we thank you so much for the many blessings that you've given us, especially of what we recently experienced with the completed Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Thank you so much for the blessing of presents that you've given to many who have reunited or gathered together to celebrate not only a time of family and friends and loved ones, but also a time to remember and be grateful and that uh, source of gratefulness comes from the blessings that you've given to us in so many ways. Thank you so much that it reminds us always of your love, care, grace, and presence in our lives, not only through this time of year, but any time of year, all the time. We are also thankful for this time of holidays as we not only delight with the recent celebration of Thanksgiving, but also the upcoming Christmas holiday and all the preparations that are going along with that. Lord, we would also claim your grace that even though we have this time of celebration, there are some realities that we're dealing with as we pray for those needing your extra tender loving care who are dealing with health concerns. These persons we commit unto you. Denise Seeley, Marion Fulker, Len Bryant, Leticia Martin, Dina Whithouse, Noel White, Bree Nunez, Adam Kelsey. O oh Lord, we commit unto you the Roy Radanovich, Glenn Graham, Mike Johnson, Sue Darlington. O oh Lord, you know in whom those who are in a situation where their faith seeing the transition between life and death and are thankful for support such as through hospice and palliative care to help them through this difficult time, not only for them but also for their families as they are aware of the transition between life and death. Lord, we would also claim that grace for families who lost loved ones, and we would pray for the families of Howard Wirth, Jeff Green, Julie Parsons, Stephen Radanovich, and others in whom are mourning, especially during this time of year when there was an empty place setting at the table at Thanksgiving, and the reminders of their not being present at Christmas, although we are thankful that they are there in spirit, and that you are there also to comfort us, as well as give us joy. Lord, we would also claim your grace upon uh, the realities of health and uh, the sense of needing to be physically healthy. We claim your protection, not only from COVID-19, but of any other bug or virus that's out there, uh, such as flu, that could make us sick and affect us not only physically, but spiritually, mentally, socially, and so on. We would pray for your grace and thank you so much for the blessing of treatment, as well as prevention, for such diseases, as well as the mindfulness you give to each of us of how to do good self-care in taking care of our own uh, selves in being and uh, working, being proactive in being healthy. Lord, we would also pray for your grace upon those in whom during this time of year are still struggling with the recent aftermath of natural disasters, be it fires, floods, uh, tornadoes, storms, hurricanes, tsunamis, uh, various situations that have gone on. Uh, of which people have been affected and are still being affected by that time. We would also pray for your grace upon the, uh, and with thankfulness upon those who are providing support to these persons, or bringing them a swift restoration, relief, as well as recovery. We thank you so much for the resources that you are providing and have provided and will provide in order to make these restoration hopes happen. We also pray for that grace in light of those who have suffered violence, whether it be the war in Ukraine, those who have suffered violence because of uh, shootings in this country and in other places, 
as well as those in whom are just needing a, a sense of hope in light of the violence that is around. We claim that also for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are struggling in terms of living their lives of faith in you while facing persecution from the powers that be that don't understand that you even came to this world for them. Especially during this time of year of Christmas wherein there's been a heightened not only awareness but a heightened sense of wanting to cause harm to Christians in various places and hot spots around the world. We pray for them and we pray for your protection upon those in whom would, are planning to do such acts that you, you let them know in some divine way that you came here on this earth even for them. Oh Lord, we would also pray for anyone who's facing major life changes as we come to this end of the year. Those who are, have made moves to different places, those who are looking at different career changes or uh, crossroads in their lives, we reclaim your grace as well as the wisdom that you give to them in making those choices as well as uh, knowing that you will guide them as well as provide what they would need to move forward in wherever you are leading them to. We would also pray for your grace as we continue to deal with the economy and some of its transitions, especially with inflation. We would always claim your traveling mercies and our comings and goings, especially in this time of winter and different road conditions as well as earlier dark times. Lord, we are praying that you bless our upcoming events, especially during this time of year with Advent as well as this Christmas celebration. We commit unto you the Fun and Fellowship Christmas Tea that's coming up, as well as our participation in the Very Merry Christmas Parade here in Mariposa. We would also pray for every worship experience that there's a heightened awareness for all people that there's something real and special and spiritual even beyond the commercialism and the hype of the holiday that ultimately you are the reason for the season and that you would open the hearts and minds of people to that reality as well. Thank you so much that this is a reminder for us that you are coming soon and that we are to be mindful to have and take and see those opportunities you give us to share your loving grace with kindness, gentleness, and love. We commit to you any other concerns right now in this moment of silence of which we're thankful that you hear the language of our hearts as well. Thank you, God, for these things, and we commit them all in the name of Jesus, who taught us to boldly and confidently pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 1, verses 39 through 45, and verse 56. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea. 
to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lori, for the reading of God's word. Next to a birthday or anniversary celebration, especially if it is a milestone year, the anticipation of celebrating Christmas excites and encourages us. And although the stores have shown signs of this with their decors as early as October, we delight in the church's celebration through the season of Advent, the four Sundays before Christmas. It is further unique this year as Christmas Day, December 25th, will fall on a Sunday. What a yearly blessing it is to end every year. Ironically, while there are times of enjoyment, pre-Christmas time also brings out the highest moments of stress. Crafters have been hard at work since summertime with their Christmas-themed handiwork and possible money-making gifts for the upcoming holiday craft shows and fairs. Plans for specific celebrations and special events from now until Christmas Day are already being planned. The first and second Sundays of the Advent wreath lighting have already been recorded for our YouTube worship. Furthermore, budgets are studied to ensure that there is money for all the anticipated expenses. Calendars are looked at in shuffling the growing activities to be scheduled, factoring travel and what to bring to such events. Making to do and to give list and checking them twice can match in the length and details the proverbial Santa Claus list of those who's naughty or nice. What is universal in all these plans is that any intentional celebration involves a lot of hard work, a lot of behind the scenes activity. There are preparations before, during, and after the event. The same is true in the retelling of the first and original Christmas story. This is the first coming of Jesus on earth. Our recollecting the events before, during, and after Jesus' birth will also look at some of the obscure parts of the Christmas story. These Bible readings will reveal behind the scenes background that hopes to deepen the understanding of the familiar passages of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. The inspiration for this series came from the short skit, You Are Important, Elizabeth, by Dolores Klinsky Walker, and, this, and she wrote this in November 21, 1980. It is a fictional what-if story if all the people in the original Christmas story had a say on being the supporting, if not overlooked persons when the Christmas story is retold every year. For us, this year will be the exception. Besides the well-known New Testament Bible readings in the first chapters in Matthew and Luke, there are also Old Testament readings written several centuries before. As early as 700 BC, BCE, there were already writings about the coming of Jesus. Two passages from two prophets are the theme verses which will span the three Christian hol year holidays of Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany from now into early January 2023. From Isaiah 6, 6 through 7. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, he will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. 
He will also be called Father who lives forever and Prince who brings peace. There will be no limit to how, his, how great his authority is. The peace he brings will never end. He will rule on David's throne and over his kingdom. He will make the kingdom strong and secure. His rule will be based on what is fair and right. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure that happens. He rules over all. And from Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13, God says, I know what I am doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we come to you with thankfulness for your word being read, and especially that of the familiar retelling of the Christmas story during this time of year. Lord, we are calling upon you and longing the blessing of you responding to giving the very best for us, including of how we can be closer to you and to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. When we share the Bible Christmas story, familiar details come to mind. There is Mary and Joseph, baby Jesus born in a stable in Bethlehem. Also remembered would be the visit of those shepherds, then later the wise men. Before all this happened, there were other people rarely mentioned yet involved in the Christmas story. They would play a part in Jesus' birth and his ministry later as an adult. We start off at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, when rather than introduce what was going on with Mary, we hear the first angelic visit to a priest named Zechariah. He was married to Elizabeth, and it was important to know that they had gotten so old enough that they were no longer able to bear children. It is also very important to know that in those days, culturally, it was important that a husband and wife would have offspring. And this wasn't the case with Zechariah and Elizabeth. And yet, I'm sure with Zechariah's role as a priest within the temple, there was pleadings of God giving them a child. And yet, until that time, that was not heeded. It was only in their old age when an angelic appearance came to Zechariah that said that he and Elizabeth would have a son and gave specifics that the son's name would be named John and he would be the prophet of the Most High. He would be born ahead of the one who would be called the Most High, that being Jesus. So, prior to Jesus' birth and the anticipated uh, pregnancy of Mary, there was already the miracle of upcoming birth of John through Zechariah and Elizabeth. Later on, we hear the story of the visit that the angel gave to Mary and informed her that she herself would bear the Christ child through the conception from the Holy Spirit. Of course, as it was for Zechariah and Elizabeth, for Mary, this was very life-changing, and then later on for Joseph, who had his own concerns in realizing that his firstborn would not be of his own. It's interesting to hear how personal and how relevant the first Christmas story, even as familiar as it is to us, is so tied in with some of the concerns we would have today. And yet the dynamic that is going on with Mary when she hears of the news is one of encouragement when the angel says to her, remember your cousin Elizabeth? She herself 
is pregnant, even though she, based on her uh, age, could not bear children anymore, but she is already pregnant several months, of which you could be encouraged. And the angel concludes with this, which is a message for all of us. With God, nothing is impossible. It is here where we see a neat connection of the importance of encouraging and identifying support that was going on. Thanks to the angel, Mary knew that something wonderful and miraculous had happened with Elizabeth. And it was also important to know that in Mary's case, since her own pregnancy was that of miraculous, uh, there was no one that she could really share it to. No one that she could really share it to except to Elizabeth. And so upon hearing the news, she made preparations of visiting Elizabeth, who incidentally was her cousin. And so there is a kin relationship between Jesus and John the Baptist that we see early in the Gospel of Luke. And Mary comes over to visit Elizabeth. Now it is amazing to hear this account. Mary comes by and the moment that Mary sees Elizabeth, the child within Elizabeth, that being John, is staring with her, leaps is the description. Now, I have a confession to make. I have never had the experience of pregnancy or childbirth as women have, but I'm sure they can identify readily with the leaping and moving around of the baby in the womb. And I'm sure even though it was painful, it was probably surprising and even exciting for Elizabeth of the joy of reaction of her unborn child reacting when she saw Mary and the mother of Jesus, of whom later on John would be a prophet too. And so it is this blessing of seeing the realness of, of uh, this relationship that reminds us, even in our own time and place, of wherever we're at in our journey of life and faith, there is the importance of leading that identifying support uh, from another person. And it is helpful and encouraging to see this at the very beginning, even before Jesus was born, even before John was born, of the need. In fact, I would even call it a prenatal care for both women of bringing about support in light of their unique circumstance, their miraculous circumstance, of not only their pregnancy, but of who they would give birth to. And so the visit continues, and Elizabeth describes her own personal experience of John moving about in the womb, acknowledging, recognizing of Jesus' own miracle of, of uh, Mary uh, and Jesus within her own womb, uh, preparing for their wonderful day of their eventual birthdays. It is one of that encouragement that Elizabeth gives praise unto God and acknowledges her place, even in light of the fact that as the Christmas story is retold, it would focus more on Mary and Joseph and Jesus. And for the most part, Zechariah and Elizabeth would be a sideline obscurity, but not this time. The blessing of realizing the importance of Elizabeth and encouragement of Mary, the mutual encouragement they gave to one another is a lesson for us today. That in the midst of trying times and trying times that can be also one of great joy and anticipation and excitement, such as that of childbirth, such as that of accomplishment, uh, in as much as times of trial and struggle and grief that we need that support is a lesson for us today as we go out into the world and share God's love. It is this message that we have that all the more encourage us that in the midst of very many times where life is much changing, we are able to build relationships in an ever-changing world that lasts for eternity. By God's grace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
please join me in the invitation to the offering. From God's love, grace, and generous giving, we have received so much. So now, out of the gratitude and love of God, let us cheerfully give unto God. Today's musical offering is from our very own Pat Oliver, and it's Come, Thou Great Redeemer. offering prayer. Thank you, God, for your love and grace most seen in the giving of your son, Christ Jesus. In presenting this offering along with our lives, bring us closer to you that we may be used to fulfill the bringing of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's closing song is Come Now Long Expected Jesus. And again, in the United Methodist Hymnal, it's on page 196.
Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. We are blessed in being the Mary Post United Methodist Church as we worship God together, even through this YouTube. Thank you so much for your ministry of presence as we've delighted in God's presence that is not only with us now, but always. We're also blessed to continue on with our in-person Sunday morning worship at 9.30 with all the accompanying ministries, such as our fellowship and coffee time following the service. We're also blessed to continue with our ministry of giving with our November communion missions offering towards our emergency fund to help those that need assistance during this time of year. Our December mission giving fund will be for the disaster relief as there are still needs for those who have suffered from the oak fire that we can still help out with as a church. We're also blessed to look forward to some of the upcoming ministries that will be happening in December. And just to let you know, we are in the season of Lent. That means we are in gung-ho preparation for the holidays, especially in the celebration of Christmas. This includes things such as the United Methodist Men meeting on the first Saturday of the month, uh, which at 8, 8 o'clock for breakfast at the Steve Sportsman Cafe, followed by the meeting of the Fix-It team, and that would be on December 3rd. On December 10th, we are looking forward to the blessing of the restart of the Fun and Fellowship with the Christmas tea at midday, followed by later on that evening, the participation of our congregation and church with the Very Merry Christmas Parade here in town. So we're delighted to be participating with that. Also take note, as we're looking way ahead, to note that we that weekend of Christmas will include Saturday, the Christmas Eve service, and then Sunday, uh, which is Christmas Day, of which, yes, we will be having worship uh, here in the sanctuary on that Sunday as well. So a lot of opportunities are there to give thanks, to appreciate, continue grace in your tra uh, traveling, especially with uh, days having less light and travel conditions with the weather. Always remember that God's grace and peace and love is with us always. Amen. Will you receive the benediction? I thank God every time I remember you. And I always pray for all of you with joy. I thank God for the help you gave me while I told people the good news. You helped from the first day you believed until now. I am sure that the good work God began in you will continue until he completes it on the day when Jesus Christ comes again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And now, where will we go and who will we be? We go out into the world to be God's children, to build relationships in an ever-changing world that lasts for eternity. Amen. Mm -hmm.